What's up everyone? I am Jamie from 3littlegoats.com. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been around for a while, welcome back. I'm glad to see you. So today, because I am an idiot and I didn't realize that the battery in my mic was dead, I have no sound for this video, so I'm going to do everything with a voiceover. So we're going to do a little chit chat and I'll explain to you everything that we are doing with this soap. So if you like this style of video, be sure to let me know down in the comments. But of course, you need to know what kind of soap we're doing. The title kind of tells you, thumbnail tells you, but I am super excited to tell you that we're doing an Ursula inspired soap. I made some custom 3D printed molds for this and I was inspired by the scene when Ursula is like in the ocean and the ocean's all dark and gray and their tentacles are coming up and it's just one of my favorite scenes in the movie. So this is what the soap is inspired by and I love how it turned out. So without further ado, let's get started. So now we're going to initiate a little bit voiceover activation and we're going to just start with our oils. I've already melted down all of my butters and hard oils and they're all sitting at room temperature. I'm using activated charcoal for black and then I'm using two different purples that are pretty similar in color. I didn't want them to contrast too much. I kind of wanted them almost to blend together and the purples are just some samples. I had a whole bunch of different purple samplers so I just combined them into containers and divided them between darker purples and lighter purples which is a great way to use up your samples. And I'm also using the Crafter's Choice South Pacific Waters Fragrance Oil, which I absolutely love the smell of and I thought it would be perfect for the soap. Now we are going to be using some embeds for the soap. I made some tentacle embeds. I actually designed the tentacles, 3D printed them, and then casted them in silicone. And then to make sure that the little suckers kind of stood out, I hand painted them with purple mica. And I did this three times in three different sizes. That way there was a little bit of variation throughout the soap and I could use different sizes on the soap as well. So now we are going to start soaping. I'm adding in my goat milk powder as well as my kaolin clay into my oils. And if you wanna know why I use kaolin clay in my soap, I have a link down in the description with all the stuff that I use as well as why I use some of the stuff I do. So be sure to always check out the blog because even if I'm not making a video, chances are I've probably posted something on the blog as well. So I'm just going to use my stick blender or some people like to call it an immersion blender, the fancy way of saying it. And I'm just going to give this a good mix to make sure all of my powders are well incorporated into my oils. Now that everything has been nice and incorporated, it's time to add in our lye water. I like to let mine sit for three to four hours at room temperature just so it cools off and it's nice and low temp to work with. I like to soak between around 70 to 90 degrees and my lye water today was about 75 degrees so that works out perfectly. The cooler your oils and butter and your lye water is, usually the longer you have to work with depending on the fragrance oil and things that you add into your soap. But if you're doing a plain soap, you wanna keep it nice and cool. So I'm just going to blend this until it comes to a very light trace and then I will be separating it out into three different containers. Now I'm just going to add in I'm not gonna separate it into equal thirds. I do wanna keep more black than I have purples. So I'm just going to put in probably half of the batter split between the purples and keep half of the bladder, batter for black. Now I don't want my black to be black black like in our Ursula soap. I want it to be more of a gray so I'm not adding quite as much activated charcoal into my soap batter. I did pre-mix all of my micas with a little bit of oil from the batter before I added my lye water just because it's a little bit easier to incorporate it and with activated charcoal if you've ever used it or have seen me use part of powdered activated charcoal, you'll know that it can kind of be messy. My activated charcoal, if you just breathe in the direction of it while the container's open, it gets everywhere. So I like to add it in with a little bit of oil just to make sure I'm not making a huge giant mess like I normally do. I still made a giant mess making this soap, but I try to mitigate it a little bit. And then I'm just going to use my stick blender again, starting with the lightest color. And I'm just going to give this a quick mix until the color is well incorporated. And 
And then after I stick blend it, I just like to scrape down the sides with a spatula or a spoon just to make sure that there's no mica sticking to the sides and that everything is nice and colored. Now because I forgot to completely test this fragrance before I made this soap, I'm going to actually be hand mixing this in with a spatula just to make sure if it does decide to accelerate that I will be able to have enough time to do what I need to do with it before it completely seizes up on me. Which thankfully this fragrance oil did not do. It was actually a very easy fragrance oil to work with. It didn't rice, it didn't accelerate, it didn't seize. So I highly recommend this fragrance if you like easy to work with fragrances. Now comes the fun part of actually pouring in the soap. I'm doing just a very simple drop swirl, nothing real fancy about it. I wanna make sure I have enough black left over to cover the top as well. So I'm just pouring a little bit of black to cover the bottom and then I'm going to alternate with my light purple, my dark purple and my black once again until I have my mold completely filled. And then once it is filled, I'm just going to cover the entire top with the remaining black. And I actually decided that it was still a little bit thinner than I wanted it to be. I let it set for a little bit to thicken up just a little bit. That way I could kind of play with the top and give it more of a texture like tentacles were actually coming out of the soap and not just it being flat, if that makes sense. And then once it had thickened up just enough for me to kind of texturize it, I just used the back of a spoon to kind of give it a little bumps and grooves just to give it a little bit more visual interest. And then once I was happy with the top, it was time to add in the embeds. Now I have the large, medium, and small, and I've already marked out on my mold exactly where my cutter is going to hit. That way I can kind of try to mitigate me actually cutting my embeds once it's time to cut the soap. So I'm just going to place them wherever I think that they are pretty. And then I'm going to let the soap set for 24 hours before I unmold it and cut it. And then once I had all of my embeds placed in, I just took a little popsicle stick and I pushed the soap up back around the embeds. This helps not only to secure them, but since the tentacles are coming out of the water, I wanted it to actually look like the tentacles were coming out instead of them being looked like I just pushed them in there. If that makes sense. You kind of when something's coming out of the soap, it's going to leave a trail along the top of it where it came out. So I just wanted to kind of make that more realistic looking instead of having it kind of indented around each embed. I hope that makes sense. It's the only way I can really explain it. So here is a close up of the soap once I was done putting all the embeds in and playing with it. I did give it a nice good spritz of rubbing alcohol and I went back again an hour later and gave it another good spritz as well. And so I will bring you back when it is time to cut it. Now, because the soap was so tall, I decided that I was going to actually cut it on its side. That way I could keep a closer eye on the tentacles to make sure I didn't accidentally cut any of them off. I did squish one a little bit, but as you can see, I'm trying to just kind of pushing it over while I've continued to cut through. Sometimes you just gotta give it a little bit of finesse and be really patient, especially when you've got embeds and stuff, just to make sure you don't chop through them and all that hard work was for nothing. But after I cut it, here is one of the bars from the middle. And you can see that the purples are very similar, especially on camera. They are very similar, but 
you can see them in real life the different contrast of them and I just I love how this soap turned out it was so fun to make and I'm actually thinking about doing another Ursula inspired soap next week but with a combination of melt and pour and cold process soap we will see if my fragrances and everything get here on time because I just ordered a whole bunch of new supplies and I'm super excited for so that is what I've got for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? We put out new videos every single week. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.